Welcome to Five Strike Weekly. This week we review that fun second leg against FC Matagua from Kennesaw and preview all this week's news leading up to the season opener. All that and more, coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ and this is Tanner McLeod. Before we get into it, become a member of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. Sore from a weekend of soccer? There's a relaxing and affordable massage with your name on it. Massage Heights is a charming day spa that offers an exclusive escape from everyday routines. Refresh your mind, body, and spirit with a personalized spa treatment from Massage Heights. With six locations around Atlanta, look no further, book today to avoid the rush. It was quite a Tuesday night for the Five Stripes. We move on 4-1 aggregate and 3-0 on the night with a 3-0 win, of course. And uh, yeah, FC Montagua, yeah, I mean, didn't really put up too much of a fight, it really seems like. It's uh, at the end of the day, we pretty much controlled a good large chunk of it. But we still don't score our goal until the 40th minute. But before that, let's get into that lineup and how it looked. Uh, it was definitely a 3-4-3. We had Mulraney and uh, Lennon as the wingbacks and walks. Uh, Mesa and Escobar kind of feature first time officially in a game as a three-man back line. And yeah, all in all, they weren't tested too, too much. And uh, actually, I think did really quite well. Uh, and then that midfield as well, uh, you have Remedi and you have Heinemann, and both of them, yeah, kind of had a field day. Just uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think wanted. it was one of the things we touched on in the fan cam. I think that for me personally, when I first saw the lineup come out, being a bit more hesitant, thinking Matag would put up a bit more of a match than what they did, I thought that the three-four-three, although it looked good on the night, I think it wasn't necessarily challenged. That back line is quality. I think those three guys looked good together. Escobar in a more familiar position at right center back. I thought Mesa looked really good in the middle. Um, you can see his leadership. He was one of the guys that, you know, kind of moved everybody around at the back and was tidy on the ball. Walks did well again, you know, as a, as a center back in a different position as from yeah. last week as a left-sided center back in a back three. And I think Lennon and Mulraney is pretty attacking as far as wing backs go. For me, you know what you're going to get from the front three. The big question mark about this formation going forward is those two guys in the middle mm -hmm. because like you said Heinemann and Rometty were not really tested throughout this game they were not put under a lot of pressure Rometty he was I guess the more defensive of the two didn't have to worry about anyone getting in behind him and like I said that comes down to the quality of FC Matagua right and uh yeah how they set up it looked like a 4-3-3 uh you know one of their uh kind of more kind of storied guys their leading scorer of all time Rubilio Castillo wasn't even really part of the starting lineup uh, so, yeah, it seemed like they were maybe missing some of their key components to really be as lethal as Which is interesting be. because they rotated their entire squad in the league this past weekend in preparation for this match. Exactly. And so, yeah, really for large parts, they look kind of bereft of ideas. They uh, didn't really press us too hard. We had really a really large chunk of the possession. And, uh, yeah, I mean, once we were up, we were just pinging it around so that yeah they couldn't get they couldn't get it and we looked really quite dominant it seemed like Matago were cut between two minds as in they knew they needed to defend and also they knew they had to be aggressive and their press wasn't that great and despite playing with the three-man midfield they never seemed to have Atlantean at overrun in that area of the pitch it always seemed as if Hyman and Rometty had space and time on the ball to pick a pass and spray it to the side get it to the danger guys and that was that was where the danger came from and you know, as soon as Atlanta United scored, it was only going to go one way. You know, Matagua opened up even more, and Atlanta United kept getting more and more chances. And United probably could consider themselves unlucky not to have scored earlier into the match. There were some really, really good chances that came along. But when you finally do get that opener, it's from a guy who so far had two very good matches this season. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have... Uh... P.T. Martinez, who now has two goals and two assists uh, in two games, but I mean, this goal is quite, quite good. Um, yeah, this I mean, is something we want to see more of. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's incisive through the middle. I mean, it's uh, it's somewhere where you know, you know, he gets it on his favorite left foot. Uh, he puts it in the bottom right corner. I mean, it's uh, just a tidy finish, and it's something that you know he gets more into the box. I think than he has in the past, and that's really where he can be very lethal because, yeah, I mean, he had missed a couple shots where- One from was, a very similar play with a one-two with Joseph that just right, went wide. Right, and so, you know, but it's one of those things where he gets that second chance and that second bite at the apple, and yeah, he puts it away a plum uh, and starts off, I think, yeah, the barrel of just uh, kind of bad, 
bad uh, bad news for Matagua because yeah, it really was the beginning of the end after that because it was too maybe big of a mountain to climb for Matagua. Uh, definitely after that, but um, yeah. And so one nil at halftime. Uh, we're, we're I think fans are sitting pretty, feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, I felt more confident that United were going to get the next goal than, than Matagua. And yeah. you felt that Matagua were going to have to open up more in the second half. And with the chances United had already been creating, it was only you know going to be a matter of time before they got caught. And they had to keep getting their line and creeping that line higher up and higher up. And then the second goal again comes from some fantastic play between Joseph Martinez and PT Martinez. Yeah. And but even before that, Brooks Lennon wins a header. He does. And, uh, yeah, and so it uh, lays into the feet of PT Martinez. PT Martinez. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, so, some kind of uh, crazy stuff happens here, and then, I mean, Joseph Martinez from an impossible angle, really. I didn't know how wow. he was going to finish it. When I, when I saw him get the ball going wide, you knew he was going to shoot, but you think, he's probably going to hit the side netting here, because the angle was so tight. The area that he had to hit was so difficult to do, and he made it look like it was absolutely nothing. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't doubt him from acute angles. It's just what he does, I feel like, because, yeah, even like uh, against Chicago Fire all the way back when, he scored pretty much from the byline. I mean, that was, uh, yeah, I think just vintage Jose Martinez, so clinical. You really give him one chance and he really puts it puts it away. But um, yeah, and it's another, yeah, it's a uh, Joseph to PT, PT to Joseph. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, for the third goal. I Joseph mean, get credit for the assist for the third goal because he got absolutely <laughs> taken flattered. out. But uh, yeah, he got a, he got the assist apparently, and so uh, I mean, when you get clattered that hard, I mean, you might as well give him the I assist. I mean, it was here's the, last the crazy touch. thing: is that so. watching a lot of that match back, I thought that the officiating was outrageously terrible. But that third goal no comes calls. from the referee not blowing the whistle. Because yeah, most referees are going to blow the whistle right there. They're not going to play on advantage and go, the goalkeeper's out, the ball's at one of your best player's feet, he's going to dribble in and have a shot. Most most officials, I think, would probably stop the play there and yeah. give Atlanta United the free kick, because I think it was right outside of the area. So, I mean, that would have seen the keeper sent off, most likely. But still, you get that, and PT scores a goal with his right foot. <laughs> yeah, which is, I mean, the, the calm, cool, and collectiveness that he puts this away with is... I mean, that's just exactly what you want to see from P.T. Martinez, and especially, I think, uh, that building of the confidence that this type of goal really does give him. Uh, because, yeah, he sits so many people down and then puts it away with his right foot, which no number 10 apparently has done uh, for LA United in uh, 30 or 30, 30 plus goals, yeah. I mean, you've had two left footers in, in yeah. Miggy and PT, but now, hey, I mean, he's been hitting them with his right so far this season as well. Like, there have been some good strikes he's hit with his right foot. He had one in the first leg, and, mm -hmm. you know, he's putting himself in dangerous positions. He seems more confident, and he's the type of player that if he can play to the level that he wants of himself, not the expectations of the fans or anyone, what he expects from himself, it's going to be a very good thing for Atlanta United and a very bad thing for opposition defenses. For because sure. the type of goals you're seeing right now, if they can keep that chemistry and get that together, then Joseph will have another half of his fusion back. Yeah, I mean, and, oh man, was, <laughs> we'll get to uh, that fusion bit later, but... Ah, sad tear and also kind of happy to see it, but yeah, anyway, but uh, yeah, speaking of, I mean, PB&J, they have really, uh, yeah, looked quite tidy together, really creative uh, between the lines, and um, I think, yeah, it is where, you know, if all of them uh, really can be clicking like you were saying in your fan cam, I mean, yeah, not only this part of the attack, but uh, you know, if some of the other guys can join in on the attack as well, it will really make us so, so dangerous that I shudder for the league. But um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, in terms of the man of the match, pretty easy to pick here. Uh, the dude with the brace, the, you know, an assist as well. Um, yeah, PT Martinez, right? Yeah, it can't be anybody else. He's, he ran the game and I think, you know, it's been two in a row really for him, you could say, two, two man of the match performances. And, you know, he's really trying to build off the strong form that he finished last season with. And I'm, I'm just ready to see what he can do in MLS, you know, that first match against Nashville. That's that's gonna be the first, in a way, real test because Matag was a different type of opponent. And at times, they're probably a better team in terms of quality than Nashville, but, you know, We'll see what happens. I, I just want to see if he can, you know, continue this into the league and then really get going and start scoring goals. Like, kind of, like you feel like he can. And it's funny because, you know, we talked about it when he signed and during his struggles last season. He started slow with River Plate. The fans mm -hmm. there set his car on fire. Yep. So 
he's a slow starter, but once he gets going, he really endears himself to the fan base. And if he can follow the same pattern that he had at River Plate, I'm really excited to see what he can do this season. Absolutely. But uh, let's get into some of the, the match stats. Uh, so in terms of shots, we had 17 to their slowly six. Of which had, none were on target. None were on target. Uh, we had six on target. Uh, they had 22 crosses, but we also had 22 crosses. So yeah, in terms of maybe the danger of actually, I think both of them, I mean, uh, not, maybe not really too dangerous uh, from the crosses from either side, really. Uh, but yeah, possession overly favored us for sure at 60.4%. Uh, but yeah, in terms of um, yeah, this match on a whole, Heinemann, yeah, Heinemann had 98% pass accuracy in this match, which is... Yeah, I think speaks to one, the opposition, but two, yeah, I mean, it's still pretty impressive. He only missed one pass the entire match. Yeah, but, although um, he did almost have one pretty dangerous giveaway in the first half on a back pass to Meza. So yeah. again, yeah, I think you like what you said. It's a lot to reflect on the opposition. Yeah, and, and that happens. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the forwards uh, in this kind of fearsome trio that we have, uh, they combined for 15 of the 17 shots against Matagua on Tuesday. I think you want to see the other, uh, you know, other players on the pitch try to take more shots as well. I mean, that's kind of an overwhelming, you know, uh, bit on the forwards. And I think ultimately, if they're not in the team, if something like that happens, I think it's a little bit dangerous. You want to see other guys kind of play more of a part into trying to score and maybe having a shot or two. But uh, yeah, still either way, I mean, it speaks to just, I mean, the lion's share of the chances that they got. Um, yeah, so in terms of uh, our wing backs, uh, they, yeah. Uh, did pretty decently. Uh, Lennon finished with three successful crosses and three unsuccessful crosses. Uh, he completed 90% of his passes. Uh, Mulraney, he uh, had five unsuccessful uh, crosses, but he still completed 83.3% of his crosses. I think, yeah, of his passes. Or Yeah, of his, well, of his crosses, actually, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's the thing about his crosses is that it's may say unsuccessful, but he had a few that were really close to being in the danger area. They just didn't find that connection. He, yeah. he put some dangerous balls in. I think that you could see some quality from him. I think he needs to just get a little bit more confident maybe in himself and his surroundings and his teammates. But I think he showed some promise in terms of being a dangerous outlet on the wing and at times he also tracked back and managed to defend and win the ball off, off the opponents as well which is something you didn't really get out of a Justin Mirror maybe because his focus was on going forward so again it's the opponent but it was a good start and a good debut for Jake Moraine right I think definitely confidence builders for both of them both yeah very pacey guys that uh, are showing the willingness to go backwards and help the team so uh, yeah in terms of post-match quotes Jake Mulraney, he talked about uh, yeah his performance and what he thought of it, he said, um, and what the team uh, performance was as well. He said, as a collective, I was really happy. Uh, we could have been three or four goals up at halftime. We had a lot of chances. We still took some chances. We finished the game comfortably. Agreed there for sure. Um, yeah, in terms of Diego Vasquez, uh, Matagua's manager, he said, Atlanta's speed was practically dominant. Uh, he said it was a quick service and the team couldn't deal with PT and Barco's combination play. And the, yeah, I mean, going into the match, uh, that match preview that we had spoke about us needing to be incisive through the middle and that's through a PT and a Barco. Uh, that link up play, so, so important. And you saw, yeah, on a pitch that favors us, that we like to play on, where that plays quick. I mean, we were unplayable. And uh, Vasquez, yeah, I mean, he noted, yeah, it's, uh, it's impossible spot. to play us a little bit on uh, that pitch where we are undefeated. So, I think the most dangerous quote of the whole night, though, is the next one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, P.T. Martinez uh, spoke in some third person here. Which one is a lot on. I kind of really love, actually, because it's, uh, it's a sign of some... It's a power move. Think, it's a power move. For sure. But uh, he said, my head wasn't in the right place last season. I think this is the version of P.T. that you want to see. A P.T. who is confident and comfortable. This is the version that all of you guys wanted to see. Love that. Uh, and then, yeah, Frank de Boer, he mentioned on uh, PT that I think he showed some high quality play last season, but maybe it was a little bit inconsistent. He knows that, everybody knows that. When he came in this preseason, he was really determined to show himself. He wants to be a leader for the team, and he has the quality to do that. Right now, I'm really pleased with how he's involved with everything. It's really fun to watch inside and outside the pitch. 
that's uh yeah high praise from uh Frank DeBoer on PT I mean that's uh yeah I think we knew uh yeah he didn't really find uh that he was having the best time uh you know playing in MLS last season but uh yeah if he gets his mind right whew, I am here for it but uh yeah in terms of uh more of what he said um yeah uh PT Martinez even mentioned that uh, uh, that kind of connection between Jose Martinez and he, he said, uh, yes, Jose Martinez and I are working on it. Last year, I wasn't as sharp with him, but little by little, you work on it. Keep getting confidence and getting to know each other. We're happy that he keeps scoring. He's our star and he has to stay on that path. And that's lovely because, yeah, I mean, they definitely saw a little bit of a connection in this match for sure. Pretty much assisting each other's goals. However you want to say Joseph. uh assisted his second goal or not, but uh, I think he deserves it, again. <laughs> After all that punishment, I mean, come on, at yeah. least. But uh, but anyway, so in terms of, uh, yeah, like wrapping up this match on a whole, I mean, it's just, uh, I think at the end of the day, you have to take it, you know, where, yeah, Matagua, they lacked in some qualities, they are an experienced team and know each other very well, but in terms of how they were going to actually defeat us, just seemed like they didn't have the goods. Uh, we ha just had probably overarching quality that just, yeah, was too much to handle for them. And um, yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. It comes down to the quality of the two teams, the atmosphere you're playing at, your comfort playing in that area. And I think for Atlanta United, they always knew once they got them back home, they'd be able to take care of business if they had an away goal. And they didn't have a mountain to climb like last season, and they went out and took care of business. That's all you can expect, but tougher tasks will lie ahead and not really be the determining factor on what this team is. Yeah. And uh, so the announced attendance for this match was 8,474, uh, 8, uh, uh, which is a pretty decent kind of number for a Tuesday night. Not a sellout, night. though. Not a sellout. And so, yeah, there wasn't really an announcement at the stadium. Yeah, it's kind of been a little bit, uh, you know, where they, they play a coy now. They don't really try to announce it too hard in the stadium if it's not a sellout. And just what happens. It happens. It makes sense. Uh, but anyway, that does it for the match review and it gets us into the news. And yeah, we kind of talked about it, uh, that Joseph Martinez little fusion, that one half of the fusion that he uh, kind of, I think he uh, brings it out at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. Uh, just for this, because he, I think he did it last he year last for that year. as well. Uh, yeah, just gets you in the feels a little bit once you see it, because it's just, man, you know. Miggy, someone just Photoshop him in to that other part. And <laughs> Heck, if, if him and PT keep playing the way that they're playing right now, maybe PT will step in at some point in time yeah. at the end of the season. And hopefully, yeah, they come up with some sort of celebration with each other. That'd be great. But, uh, yeah, and then also uh, after, or kind of, yeah, during the match, LGP was posting on his Instagram, on his stories, uh, pretty much watching the match and being just one of the a consummate five strike fan, really. And I, I think he, uh, I mean, obviously, not only um, you know has a bunch of friends here, but yeah, he's actively rooting for the team. So great to see that, of course. But uh, yeah, some kind of maybe kind of bitter news for some people, for sure, is that uh, Atlanta's Atlanta United's second leg of the quarterfinals will be at at their bank stadium again uh, and whomever that's against if that's against Club America or Cachiones FC uh, we're filming this on a Wednesday I believe yeah they Wednesday play today after we film I believe. so yeah we won't know who yet but it's probably gonna be America yeah but uh, in terms of the away leg and if it is yeah ooh, man that's uh, quite a stadium to be at if it's the Azteca but uh, yeah it'll be March 10th or 11th and then that home leg, of course, will be at uh, 5th, 3rd Bank Stadium on March 17th or the 18th. That was the 18th. But uh, yeah, and that's uh, for those asking why, it's because of the build up to the Final Four, which is, yeah, totally different sport, totally not related to LA United. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit annoying, of course, but. Uh, I mean, better that than monster trucks. Yeah, I guess, but anyway, so. Um, you know, in terms of uh, if we were to face Club America, uh, P.T. Martinez isn't afraid. He says, we don't have any problem. I always say that Atlanta is a team that whoever we play, you have to respect. We're very strong at home. I said it before, we played Club America. We're a strong team, and I always say, it. you have to respect us, even though they are a big club in North and Central America. 
whoever we play, we have to worry about ourselves. And that's, yeah, exactly the right mindset because, yeah, we need to impose our play onto teams and especially, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think we've uh, made Fifth Third Bank a little bit of a fortress and it'll be fun to play oh, them. If it'll it be, were. that'll be, if, if it is to be Club America, I think it'll be, abs it probably will be the highest intended game that that stadium's ever had. Yeah, if I'm be being perfectly honest, out the sides like the Club stadiums. America fans will pack it out as well. I think the atmosphere will be brilliant because of how close everyone is to the, to the stands. It'll be, you know, 10,000 plus, kind of like a game, a Premier League game at Bournemouth with a big away following. I think this will be, because of the size of the stadium, because of how Club America travels, I think you'll still have more Atlanta United fans because of the size of the stadium mm -hmm. um, and because you can buy more tickets. And I just think that Atlanta United fans will, will be the majority here, unlike the bins where it was kind of 50-50 last year. I think it'll be a great game as long as Atlanta United aren't trying to climb a mountain after the first leg. Yeah, especially, yeah, if it's a Tuesday or Wednesday night. But uh, yeah, but it is also, um, yeah, Club America fans, there are a lot of Atlanta United fans that are also Club America fans. So it will be interesting to see who, in which kit they show up with, but uh, it might be contingent on what that aggregate score is in yeah. the first leg. As well, well, you know Club America's out to prove a point after last season. They, guess, sure. they were not happy with losing the Campione's Cup to Atlanta United. And Miguel Herrera made that very clear. They wanted to win that game. So They got publicly shamed in the newspapers. Yeah, they were so. publicly shamed in the newspapers. <laughs> so they're going to come out and try to set the record straight on that one, which means it's going to be a lot of pressure. But if Atlanta United can stand up to it, you know, be a lot of fun. It'd be a lot of fun. It's, it could be the beginning of a rivalry with the team in Mexico. Yeah, and that, that's uh, yeah. I think I'd be all about that. Great for optics for MLS as well. They've been wanting something like this, obviously, with uh, the league's cup and all that stuff that's uh, been concocted. But uh, yeah, so PT Martinez was named to the SCCL 2020 Team of the Week. Which is uh, yeah. very much deserved for yeah. sure. Uh, curiously, though, maybe some other guys weren't uh, named to it at all. But yeah, Joseph Martinez. Yeah. Oh well. Whatever. But uh, but I mean, it's fair because he didn't score. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's fine. He only scored one, and that's like. Uh, he had a great game. He deserved it. Anyway, another guy scored, I think, three goals. So it's, well, that'll do it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, onto the transfer rumor of the week. Oh, for Pete. Yeah, sake. it's a uh, bad boy, Jurgen Dam that you see here in this MLSsoccer.com article. Why is he called a bad boy? I'm not really sure, but... Well, definitely not. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not making that joke. Yeah, but uh, he's been linked with Atlanta United. Uh, he's a winger. He's incredibly fast. Unreal pace, really. Um, That's about all he's got going for him. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it seems like, in terms of stat-wise, it's not uh, a ton going in the way of end product. Uh, he's got one goal in about 40-ish appearances in the last two years. Uh, yeah, he costs 10 million to Tigres, but he would be coming here on a loan, uh, or I mean, uh, rather, he would be coming here on a free, on a free. in the summer, uh, and that's according to uh, ESPN Mexico's Rene Tobar. And so that says a lot. If a team like Tigres says we don't want you and we paid 10 million for you and they're not even expecting to get anything in return. That should say something about the quality of the player, in my opinion. And yeah. honestly, I think Atlanta United, once they get the Castro visa thing sorted out and you have Moraney, I think we're fine on wingers. I'd rather them sign a central midfielder or left back. Well, maybe not a left back, a central midfielder or a backup center back, like for depth. Mm -hmm. Preferably a central midfielder. Like wing is not the priority at this point anymore yeah. for me. So. But it also uh, maybe works out at the same type of time where Manuel Castro's loan ends. I think that's what was in my head earlier uh, that made me say it. Uh, so in terms of that, uh, yeah, maybe if Castro doesn't work out, then damn, it could be a guy that could be brought in. I mean, yeah, he does have unreal pace, so it really uh, could play maybe as a wingback if he's willing to track back enough that if he has enough in product, he Well, could considering be he hasn't scored or assisted too many goals, his highlight reel contains him making some tackles, which I guess is a good thing, but I mean, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see, but uh, the likelihood of this happening, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll be keeping our tabs on it, but uh, I mean, I think Colorus, just very lukewarm. Uh, the pace is the exciting part for sure. But uh, moving on from that, uh, David Beckham has been talking about Alain United and, uh, in some really good light as well. He has been saying that Atlanta United have set the bar for success and that's, uh, yeah, quote, we. We want to look at great teams and great franchises like Atlanta. I think they've set the bar so high with the fan base that they have, the amount of people that they get to, uh, the amount of people that they get to their games every week, 
I think that's where the bar stands. He also mentioned LAFC, of course, uh, that have done it quite well as well. But yeah, I mean, first team out of his mouth, and you know he's trying to emulate that. Uh, unfortunately, some of the kind of comments in our uh, kind of uh, posts kind of have mentioned that maybe Miami kind of has been dropping the ball a little bit. Obviously, yeah, a little bit. Just Fort Lauderdale situation and, and their situation. well, and the name that they're most likely going to slap on that stadium is Qatar, and they're paying them a bunch of money to represent a country that um, doesn't exactly share the same ideals of unity and inclusiveness that Major League Soccer does, which or I even, find a bit rich. Yeah, or even Miami. Or even Miami. That they're trying to But hey, but, money, yeah. lots of it. But uh, mm. yeah, so in terms of, yeah. You should change your name to Miami City. But uh, yeah, and so yeah, a lot of fans have, uh, in terms of if they live in Miami, have mentioned that, yeah, it's uh, gonna be a little bit difficult for them to maybe make this happen. But I'm for another uh, kind of power in MLS to kind of take this league to the next level. So I'm hoping for them to to do something. But we I shall mean, see. They can't be nearly as bad as the other team in Florida. Yeah, that's epic. Right on to the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Miles Robinson and. Uh, Brooks Lennon have been uh, selected to the 50-man preliminary squad for the United States in the Olympic qualifying. Uh, they probably are not going to take part, um, but it could if, uh, yeah, the qualifying goes well, and then, yeah, they could be playing part of it. But I see Miles Robinson's type of guy that <laughs> doesn't participate in qualifying, but if the team makes it, I can see him being in the squad for the Olympics. Yeah, these guys are probably very much bang on starters for us uh, at this point, if we're gonna play in a three-man uh, back line with wingbacks. So yeah, the likelihood of us releasing them, we don't have to. So it's pretty unlikely, yeah. but. At least for qualifying, and especially yeah. as far as the U.S. team is concerned on any level, there's a bit of a trust gap there, I imagine, between Atlanta yeah, United and Robinson, them. So, uh, yeah, and so for so. qualifying, we're just like, look, you can get by without it. But if it actually came to the Olympics, should they happen, which is actually up for a debate right now because of the coronavirus, um, mm -hmm. I think that if Miles Robinson was like, hey, I want to go to the Olympics, which you couldn't really blame him for that. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to represent yep. your country at the Olympics. It'd be hard to say no, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's just like, Please don't. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a lot of the the maybe non-US men's national team fans uh, would probably be saying no either. So yeah, it's, uh, I think, uh, yeah, either way, pat on the back for them, way to be selected. Uh, moving on from that, LNA2 announced a new player in midfielder, Abu Abdullaye Jop. Uh, so yeah, Stephen Glass mentioned that he's a dynamic player that has undoubted quality in midfield. Uh, his willingness to work defensively as well as being able to join an attack will strengthen the core of the squad. Yeah, they're filling out more of the, the coffers for LA2. They seem to be really trying to be strengthened to be a much better team than they have in their first two seasons. So I'm Definitely. curious to see how they fare in USL this season. Definitely. But uh, yeah, moving on to some of the more lighthearted stuff of the week. Jose Martinez and Cuevo Amigos was spotted at the Hawks game, the Atlanta Hawks game, the, the basketball game. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, I think great to see a couple of guys that are, I think, very much in that territory of burgeoning Atlanta legends, uh, kind of hanging out, uh, getting to know each other at a Haas game. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Joseph got their own custom jersey, although they, they forgot the accent mark. I think Trey Young dropped 50 that night, too. I think he did, yeah, yeah. So, you know, another young really? Atlanta up and coming legend. But uh, next bit is, I'm gonna comment on this one because it's happening at a place where I'm actually not gonna be, I'll be coming back oh, from Vegas, no. but. I was wondering. Yes, <laughs> there will be a spike meet and greet at the Atlantic Station Team Store next Monday, March the 2nd from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So get out there if you wanna meet our lovely, adorable, golden little spike. Yeah, I'm gonna be flying back from Vegas at night. I will not be going to the Nashville game this weekend um, because I'm bad at putting dates together and one of my best friend's bachelor parties is, is this weekend. So I'll be out in Vegas supporting the Five Stripes. I'll probably be sitting down at a casino with another friend of mine watching that game. It'll be great. Um, but as far as Spike's concerned, I'm really heartbroken. Um, I wanted to get some cuddles at Spike because he might be the only dog I can cuddle because my roommate keeps threatening me. So <laughs> looking at you, Kelly Francis. All right. uh personal problems, but uh... We talked about it before the culture. <laughs> before the culture podcast is trying to get me stabbed. I hope you guys know that. If I die, it was Kelly's fault. <laughs> 
we will know who it was and uh, probably where. It's probably at their apartment. Yes. But uh, anyway, so uh, Chino Bishaba scores again for the Perdad. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, kind of a regular occurrence nowadays. That, Good for uh, him. I'm glad he's happy and settled in. Yeah. Really an important player to their squad. Yeah, and hopefully he does make it to the Paraguayan national team. He's playing the way that he does. I see it hard for them to leave him out. Right. But uh, that does it for the news. It gets us to buy or sell. And simply, we put up an Alien United topic and we say if we buy or sell it and give our reasons why. So first topic is that we will play more three-man back lines this season than four-man back lines. Buy or sell. This is actually a really good question. Um, I feel like if everyone is fit, Atlantis United has enough good center backs to where they feel comfortable playing them. Personally, I'd prefer a back four, but I'm gonna buy this because I think that Frank DeBoer wants to play with a back three. I think that's what he feels most comfortable with. I'd prefer to have another man in the middle of the park. I'm not sure where you find that man or put them in there, but whether you have a three-man midfield with a back three, I don't know, but I think that you see a back three more than a back four this year. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's tough to say too. I mean, because yeah, there are times where he's saying he wants to kind of meld it between a three-man and a four-man during a match where they can switch if they need to. But in terms of starting 11s and if it's a three-man back line, it seems like that's the way he wants to play because yeah, uh, in terms of Lennon, in terms of Mulraney, they're definitely more of the attacking variety, but we've got other guys that can maybe play as more of a defensive type of uh, quality as well. So, yeah, I buy that it's going to be more three-man back lines. Uh, how much more? That's for up to, up to, be, to be debated. Who but, knows? <laughs> but uh, next topic is... Watch uh, him start with a back four against National this weekend. It's going to be, of course, yeah. <laughs> Just so to make like, bucks 50, out of 50, 50, us. 50, 50, 50. But uh, yeah, next topic is that the Martinez bros can combine for 45 plus goals in all competitions this year. I'm going to buy that. I think Joseph Martinez hits... I think they can do that in just MLS, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Um, PD Martinez is start off the season really good. He seems to have the mentality right. He seems to be in that kill mode where he wants to do things he's confident. Joseph Martinez is good for 27 to 30 goals a season if he's healthy. If they stay healthy, I think I buy, they hit 45 goals combined in MLS. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think in all competitions, it makes more sense. Uh, so I buy that. I think in MLS... That's because, 30 for Joseph, 15 for PT. Right. But I think he will be away with Venezuela if he does. Uh, and so that will impact his numbers a little bit. But yes, yeah, he definitely also is gunning for the old record that he had in the... Uh, the goal record, and so yes, he I think is going to be very motivated to uh, to beat that you know number that uh, Carlos Vela beat uh, Joseph last year. And so in terms of uh, PT Martinez, then that's really I think the question is how many goals can he get? He had seven last year in all competitions. I think yeah, he can probably pretty easily get ten if he's healthy and uh, can play as many games as possible. Yeah, I think you know. I would even stretch it to, if he can even get 15, that would be incredible. That's like a really great season probably with double digits, probably with both. Really, really good. So uh, yeah, that does it for buy or sell and gets us to our sponsored bit of the week in that there's a giveaway for Atlanta Sport and Social's uh, Atlanta United Block Party. And so yeah, check out this video right quick. Kits on, scarves up. The Atlanta United Block Party, presented by Bullet Bourbon, returns on Friday, March 6th, taking over the Summer Hill neighborhood for ATL's biggest open street celebration of all things Atlanta United. Get your tickets today. Link in the description below. A portion of event proceeds benefit soccer in the streets and the organized neighbors of Summer Hill organizations. Check out the third annual Atlanta United Block Party. So make sure to get in on the giveaway. The winner will be announced next Wednesday. So, you know, make sure to get in. And uh, yeah, you can get in on that block party. That's really hella dope. But moving on, let's get into the mailbag. And you guys send in these questions through IG story. Please continue to do so. And we might answer your question in the future. First question comes from Bad Boy Tim. Bad Boy Tim asks, will Remedy improve this season? Or will we need to sign his replacement this summer? I think that Remedi had a decent game against Matagua, but again, it kind of not to beat a, you know, an old, a dead horse, whatever you want to say. Definitely. It was against the opposition, you know, that didn't challenge him too much. He had time on the ball, he had some good passes, but 
He's the type of player that I think can be challenged if you have a playmaker running in behind him, if he has a defensive duty that he really has to stick to. He didn't have to worry about that against Matagua. Um, I will stand by the fact that I think Rometty is better suited for a midfield three with a specific task, especially if it involves marking an opposing playmaker out of the game. He's done that multiple times for Atlanta United. Um, if he can improve, if he can improve his positional discipline and his reading of the game, that would be a massive boost for both himself and for Atlanta United. Um, but still, me personally, I think Atlanta United needs another midfielder, someone who can either start ahead of Jeff Lorenowitz, preferably, but has that quality, like a TAM level holding midfielder. That's what I think Atlanta United needs, and I, unless Rometty improves drastically, I still think that's where United need to strengthen. Yeah, I think he's more of that kind of uh, modern midfielder that uh, is more of like the pressing variety where, yeah, he definitely needs to be able to improve that reading of the game, that positional discipline, like you were saying. Uh, and he lacks a little bit in in products, really, if he's a box to box. So, you know, he can't really be like out and out, uh, you know, in a two be really relied on uh, game in game out for that type of uh, quality that you know we would expect from that type of position and so uh, yeah I think there, there would need to be somebody that uh, is brought in because yeah Rometty He's a bulldog. He's great. Uh, you know, his work rate is incredible. Down. Like exactly. he has a lot of really solid qualities. The issue about Rometty is that if Frank De Boer does opt to play in a midfield two, that's more responsibility, and each midfielder has to have a lot of tools in their belt in terms of what they can and can't do to be able to play a midfield two. And I think that he just misses some of those tools that you need. Again, good in three, not so great in two. Right. Uh, and also, I mean, work rate and uh, engine is oh, is incredible. Yeah, notch, it's incredible. Absolutely. But uh, next question comes from Jose Omar Medina. I apologize, I've been saying Jose Omar Medina for a couple weeks now, I feel like. Uh, but his question is, who is Mario and Luigi between the Martinez bros? I think this is pretty straightforward. This is pretty straightforward. I mean, P.T. Martinez has mentioned that uh, Jose Martinez is the star. It would make Jose Mario, P.T. Luigi. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think the other question is, who are some of the other characters on the team that are uh, Mario related, right? <laughs> oh man, um, do we have- Who's Yoshi? Who's Yoshi? <laughs> um, Yoshi would probably be, oh man. Rometty? Well, Rometty, I was thinking Wario a little bit. Oh, oh, interesting. Yeah, he could be a little bit nasty sometimes in the tackle. Sure, you know, sure. I can think he could be, there's no Waluigi. Yeah. That would have been LGP. Yeah. LGP would have been Waluigi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's got a bit of an evil side to him, right. like the shit howlsery part. Right. Um, I think this this kind of gets into levels is, that I don't really is Barco know. Is Barco Toad? <laughs> is Barco Toad? Barco Toad. Uh, oh, dang. That, that's a pretty good shout, actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, and then, uh, what, King Koopa? I think this is this is the limit of... Uh... King Koopa, <laughs> Brad Guzan? Oh, interesting. Why? Because King Koopa the one that throws shit. Uh, uh, Agazan yeah, throwing stuff yeah. uses his hands a whole lot more Love than it. anybody else. We'll go with All it. All right, we're not get too far down this rabbit <laughs> yeah, hole. Yeah, that's a that's a weird sidebar. That, get uh, down and below <laughs> whoever you think Atlanta United players are in terms of the Mario world. <laughs> All right, next question comes from Dawson Williamson. Who is going to score for the second, or who is going to score the second most goals on the team, assuming Joseph is first? I'm going to go with PT Martinez. I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stamp my colors to the mat or nail my colors to the mast. I think PT Martinez goes for 15 goals this season. I think he's going to go double double. I'm I'm going to be bullish on it. I think he's going to really impress some people. And by the end of the season, Atlanta United fans are going to be going, "Why did we not like this guy before? Because he's going to be that dude." Yeah. I just I feel I'm, I feel confident in him. Yeah, I, I think PT is the best shout, but I think Ezekiel Barco also is a man on the mission as well. Like he wants to get to Europe as well. So yeah, I think he uh, can have a big season. Um, I think he can edge out PT, but you know, I think at the end of the day, I think PT is getting more forward, and I think you saw like he was very clinical. So, if you had to take a pick out of someone who's not, mm -hmm. say, maybe a DP player, because those are kind of the obvious choices when you think about the money you pay for them, they're your forward players. If you had to uh. take a pick out of the guy's not a DP that was going to have the decent goal return this year, who uh. do you think? It's a great, great question. Um, I think, yeah, Joseto, definitely, if he's able to get in the team at some point, uh, yeah, definitely has a good shout because, yeah, he definitely looks like a guy that has an eye for goal. Uh, I think. Maybe a dark horse is a Jake Mulraney. Uh, I was watching him, uh, you know, practice uh, taking some shots at uh, with a goalie and net, and yeah, he was putting them away with finesse, left foot, right foot. Yeah, I mean, I think he he has an outside shot if he gets in front of goal enough, but 
Uh, I, I just, the question is, is he, is he going to get in front of goal enough? So, if he you? can get goals, I think that's, that's, a, that's a really interesting shot. I mean, my, my gut feeling would probably be Hazetto if he can, can play because you saw the type of skill that he has. Yes, it was against Birmingham Legion, but still, he has an eye for goal. He has some talent and he wants to push forward, and I think that he could definitely be a good shout. But with Mulraney, it's one of those things that, you know, if you can get some more goals from those wing back positions, you know, if he can cut in onto, onto his foot and get a shot off and feel confident enough to do that, that just adds another bit of danger to Atlanta United and the way that they play. And, you know, it's really difficult for, for outside defenders. Do you stick with the wing back? Do you go with PT? Do you go with Barco? Whatever happens, that could be a big thing for Atlanta United because. Miriam gave you some goals last season, but to be able to get production off both wings from both wing backs would be really, really quality this year. Yeah, agreed. Next question comes from Negrito X Negrito. Would you take a CCL trophy if it meant us not getting another title for five years? No. I've been waiting. Why are you doing this to us no, now? No, just no. <laughs> no. I, uh, like the, I love the optimism in terms of winning the CCL, but I'm not waiting five. I'd rather have multiple MLS Cups and US Open Cups in that time frame. Yeah, I think it's quantity over which one we And the quality of the CCLs, point. I still think, is up for debate. Yeah, and so, I mean, I would take, yeah, I would take three trophies versus one CCL. I would do it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's it's too tough. MLS also. Cups is what matters most, I think, here. So yeah. I'd take two MLS Cups in a heartbeat. Yeah. Last question comes from Timalim1776. Are Joseto and Castro better than what we put on the field in like two? If so, who's left out? I think Hazeto definitely. I think Hazeto is a guy that would either, right now, maybe over Hindman in terms of someone who's trying to get forward a little bit more mm -hmm. if you're trying to have a bit more of attacking input mm -hmm. from your midfield. Um, Hyman did complete 98% of whatever it was of his passes, but he hasn't exactly looked fantastic in terms of maybe his killer balls or what you'd like to see. He Maybe he doesn't have the brief to get forward as much as he did last year. He's still learning he's a still, new position. Yeah, he's still learning a new position as well, but it then. depends on how aggressive Frank DeBoer wants to be. Um, but I could definitely see Joseto starting for Atlanta United. As far as Castro goes, he seems more of like a guy that would come off the bench or be rotated in maybe a U.S. Open Cup game or something like that. Mm. Well, this is a difficult part about it is we haven't seen Manuel Castro play in person yet. And uh, so it's difficult to really, I mean, really prognosticate what type of uh, impact he can have on the team. Uh, is Castro better than some of the guys that we have currently in that setup on Tuesday? Uh, I mean, this is the thing. If, is he going to play in a three-man back line as a wing back? Or is he going to play as, uh, you know, one of the guys in the forward line? He's de definitely probably not better than P.T. Martinez or Ezekiel Barco, nor Jose Martinez. So uh, it's going to be difficult to see him play a part in probably a three-man back line. Joseto, yeah, I think he could probably, uh, if yeah, if it's a, you know, throw everything uh, against the wall type of, uh, you know, setup, then yeah, Joseto and a Hyman in a midfield two, I mean, that's going for it. For that's sure. going to leave you a bit open in the middle, for yeah. sure. But uh, I feel like, yeah, against Matagua, that probably would have played pretty well. Or against actually. a lower opposition team at home at the bins, you know, in MLS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you get away with that. Right. But uh, that pretty much does it for the mailbag. And almost the entire show except for the question of the day. And guys, the question of the day is definitely still CONCACAF Champions League themed, and it is what do you think about Atlanta United having to play the second leg of their CONCACAF Champions League quarterfinal at Fifth Third Bank Stadium in Kennesaw? Get down in the comments below and let us know what you guys have to say. But well, guys, that's it for us today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, share this video, like this video, all that good stuff. Remember to, uh, yeah, did, we, did I say that right? Remember like, to subscribe. Share, subscribe that all that good stuff. Uh, <laughs> it gets all jumbled in my head now anymore. But uh, yeah, so for Tanner, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.